treasurer requested and the Pundari denies claims of arresting Sir Peter Ipatas. A very good evening. This is National MTV News. I'm Grace Papiali. Thank you for joining us. With the ongoing fuel dilemma with the country's largest fuel supplier, Puma Energy, Octedi Mining Limited has decided to cease use of Puma Energy's diesel and jet A1 fuel in Tabubil. Octedi made a stance in a media statement stating that this was due to Puma Energy's inability to provide consistent diesel and jet A1 fuel as per its contract to OTML. Puma Energy's prolonged inability to provide consistent diesel and jet A1 supply and fulfill its contractual obligations has resulted in Octedi Mining Limited resorting to cut off ties with Puma Energy. As per the statement, Octedi Mining Limited claims Puma has not only decided to cease supply of Jet A1, it also served OTML with a notice of intention to vacate and demobilize its facilities in Tabubil, despite OTML's offer to purchase these facilities. Octedi Mining Limited decided to explore alternative solutions after this treatment from Puma and has engaged with several alternative providers for its fuel requirement. OTML Managing Director and CEO Kedi Ilimbit said the decision was made after careful consideration of the company's operational needs and the necessity for reliable fuel services. Mr. Ilimbit also stated that it is a proactive stance in addressing threats and mitigating risks in order to maintain uninterrupted operations and safeguard the interest of OTML, its workforce and its shareholders. Francisca Anania, National MTV News. Prime Minister James Marape has met with recently appointed President and Chief Executive Officer of Newmont, Tom Palmer, in the National Capital District. Mr. Palmer paid a courtesy call to Prime Minister Marape at his office in Se Manasupe House to update him on Newmont's mining sites to understand the better operations to understand the operations better in line with the company's new plans for 2024 going forward. Prime Minister Marape thanked Mr. Palma and assured him of his government's commitment to work with the developer in all its projects covering Lihir and Wafi Golpu. The Prime Minister also commended Mr. Palma and Newmont for heeding several of his recommendations, including getting PNG to have its own operation in reference to Newmont's worldwide business portfolio and engaging in the conversation on initial public offering or IPO at the Port Mosby Stock Exchange to open up the stock market to PNG. The conversation also touched on temporary solutions for the current fuel shortage for the mine's operations, corporate tax revenue from Lihir and local ownership content in Lihir mine come the next review of the mining contract in 2035. Estagane, National MTV News. The Deputy Opposition Leader James Nomane has called on the Prime Minister James Marape to appoint a Treasurer, highlighting that being Prime Minister and Treasurer at the same time amidst increasing socio-economic pressures. Mr. Nomane indicated that since the first call for the Prime Minister to appoint a Treasurer two weeks ago, the country was experiencing natural disasters, the national budget in disarray, IMF imposing fiscal discipline and a payroll debacle affecting PNGDF soldiers. 
Mr. Nomane underlined that Marape does not have the time as Prime Minister or the technical savvy to manage payroll, implement the budget and champion economic recovery. He said the country need a treasurer who can synchronize visual and monetary policy to its growth, regain the sovereignty through improved relationships with development partners like IMF, assess the impact of population dynamics on economic growth and evaluate the effect of global economic activities impact on the PNG economy. He added that Marape must appoint a treasurer in the interest of transparency and good governance, indicating that PNG needs someone who can manage the budget and payroll whilst concurrently dealing with the plethora of socio-economic challenges that affect economic indices. Nomane stated that these issues are serious and demand the undivided attention of a full-time treasurer because of their collateral economic impact. Mr. Nomane said PNG needs a competent treasurer to control expenditure and prioritize payment for the public servants and the DSIP fundings. Sharon Engnui, National MTV News. The member for Kompiam Ambum, Se John Pundari, has refuted claims by the Enga governor, Se Peter Ipatas, that he was behind Se Peter attempted arrest on Monday this week. Se John confirmed that he has lodged a complaint with the police over Governor Ipatas' accusations. Se Pita Ipatas in a media conference held with this newsroom and other media outlets on Monday this week accused Se John Pundari for instigating an unlawful attempt to arrest him at Jackson's International Airport when he flew in from Australia. Sir John said the governor should be careful when making such claims as it has caused unnecessary fear and anxiety among his people. I must state for the record that I have got no knowledge and have got nothing to do with anyone or any persons for that matter including police personnel who may have been at Seven Mile International Airport when the so-called leader arrived. Sir John said he will take legal actions against Sir Peter for the comments made against him. I have further instructed my lawyers to file a separate lawsuit for the defamatory statements made against myself. He also called on Sir Peter to provide the identities of the police officers who he claimed to have attempted to arrest him to the constabulary's internal investigations unit. We must be careful with our words so as to ensuring that they do not create unnecessary reactions amongst our people. Edson Kuso, National MTV News. Chairman for Teachers Service Commission, Samson Wangihomi, representing teachers across the country, congratulated the new Minister for Education and member for Gumini, Lucas Dekena, Dekena. MP Dekena took on this role after the passing of late Minister and member for Usinobundi, Jimmy Uguro, earlier this year. Chairman of the Teachers Service Commission, Samson Wangiomi, gave the welcoming remarks. I, on behalf of the 70,000 teachers who would like to, um, to pay a tribute to our late minister in uh, Honorable Jimmy Ugoro, who has done a, a marvelous job, and, also, and at the same time welcome our new minister in Honorable uh, Lucas Dekena, MP, uh, for Gumini. We want to welcome him and uh, the Teaching Service Commission has already uh, read about his uh, or what he wants to do and one of the very things that he's looking forward to. Mr. Wangiomi said the Teacher Service Commission anticipates to work alongside the minister and congratulated him on his new post. 
Chairman Wangiomi also gave the Commission's commitment to promoting quality teaching in the country. 8 minus 2, who can put it in a nice subtraction story? We will work alongside our minister and uh, we wish him uh, every success in his endeavors to serve the people of Papua New Guinea in the education space or the education uh, space. And, uh, and we are committed to, to working with him to ensure that we, we uh, deliver quality education, quality teaching uh, to the children of, uh, of Papua New Guinea. And we are grateful to the Prime Minister for this timely appointment. Tamara Agavi, National MTV News. National MTV News continues after the break. Stay with us. The Smart Start School promotion is back this year. Win yourself one of 1,000 consolation prizes valued at 50 kina each nationwide. And the school with the highest number of valid entries per region will win a 44,000 kina Smart Start school grant. Simply collect three empty packets of Smart Start breakfast biscuits. Put in an envelope with your name, school and number on the envelope and drop in an entry box at a participating school near you. Promo ends on the 22nd of April. Contact us on Facebook to register your school today. Terms and conditions apply. Buy more, win more, one time rules rise. We have half money mark below 300,000 kira. No can miss out. Buy 10 kg roots with them grain rice. Cut them round in big the roots logo on top long front long back rice. Now write the name, none of us long you long backside long app. Drop them inside long entry box long store. Week one draw, one one winner by XC 500 kina. Week two draw, 1,000 kina. Week three draw, 2,000 kina. Now long week four draw, 5,000 kina. Second Roots Rice Facebook page, don't kiss him, more talk savvy. Thanks, the conditions is tough. Remember the joy of playing with your toys as a child? At Money Plus, we believe that every small business deserves a chance to build and grow. That's why we offer asset financing. Now chance to building something new, to see a different point of view. Mipla Halivim Wari belong you. Hola mundo. I'm buzzing like a beehive. Uh, sky high on the good vibes. Uh, I sound like a pretty pee. Hey world. Connect to your world with the new, easy to use, and thoughtfully designed Inspiron. Experience, a convenient and smarter way to do your banking with BSB Mobile Banking. You don't have to leave the office or your home to pay for bills. You can view your account balance, transfer funds, top up phone credits or purchase easy pay units wherever you are. Visit your BSB branch today to register now for BSB Mobile Banking. BSB Mobile Banking, the smarter way to bank. BSB, our bank, our people. Asian Development Bank is a international financial institution. It's a multilateral development bank that is owned by 68 member countries. The main mandate of ADB is actually you know, to help create a, a prosperous, inclusive region. What we do is we provide uh, financing, we provide uh, technical assistance, and uh, we provide, uh, we facilitate partnership. That's on Monday night. You're watching National MTV News. Koilala District has presented its 2019 to 2023 Acquittal Report to the Department of Implementation and Rural Development today in Waigani, Port Mosby.
Present today was Goylala District Development CEO Titus Giro and his team from the administration. Secretary of the Department of Implementation and Rural Development, Ahivaki, acknowledged the district for their perseverance in delivering the acquittals. But it's important these acquittals must come in two parts. One is the fiscal reports of uh, what you have delivered. Two is the financial report. Uh, most cases, we have been receiving financial reports, but we are not receiving fiscal reports. Uh, it's not only uh, uh, Lala or but I just want to tell the country that you need to provide fiscal reports. Because fiscal reports are the ones we are measuring the progress of this country. We need to know how many bridges been delivered, how many, how many roads been delivered, how many aid posts been delivered, so that we can measure the trend of the development. Koilala District Development Authority CEO Titus Giro explains that leadership factors determine the deliverance of service in the district. Due to uh, our delay, in fact, was due to um, high turnover of DAs since I got replaced in 2019. It's, it's about leadership. When there is the leadership, you get these things presented as and when required. District Finance Manager Sunaim Dao highlights the challenges faced in getting the acquittals done on time. You know, in terms of the issues and challenges that uh, we faced in compiling these acquittals, no check copies, missing paid vouchers, some resolutions not attached. But we are so fortunate and privileged to, to have our EO here who provided all those uh, requirements and that we got them uh, attached to all these uh, acquittals. Upon this, the DIRD Acting Secretary of Southern Region, Nathan Kiri, elaborates on the level of compliance that is in place. So consultation with the respective uh, agencies at the sub-national level is, has to be promoted at all aspects because we'll be seen to be providing the level of advice to guide you to you know, properly deliver much needed mm -hmm. services within the legal precincts that dictates the manner in which this uh, to be utilized. Meanwhile, Department of Implementation and Rural Development has stressed on the importance of transparency of fund management and district projects and services for each district to comply with. Following the presentation of the Goylala District Acquittal Report, Department of Implementation and Rural Development Secretary Ahi Vaki has explained the compliance process and others. Uh, uh, we understand that Ombudsman have actually issued, issued uh, the direction, uh, setting the deadlines, but as a functional uh, duty for us, it's, it's important that you uh, maintain the compliance. Sharing the same sentiments was DIRD Assistant Secretary of Southern Region, Nathan Kiri. The amount of funds through the services improvement program that has been remitted to the districts for uh, development purposes, uh, this evidence is to show for how you expedited the funds. Uh, you know, the service improvement program is broken down into seven various sectors. And the manner in which you expedite file, uh, the funding is solely dictated by the uh, sectoral allocations. So your efforts in uh, ensuring that these reports are finished to the department will uh, enable us to ascertain the level of compliance in terms of uh, implementing the program in compliance with the respective uh, guidelines, especially the administrative guidelines and the financial instructions. The Hanganofe District of Eastern Highlands Province has cleared its District Support Improvement Project Funds acquittals to the Department of Implementation and Rural Development today. The reports were presented by Hanganofe MP Robert Atiafa to the Deputy Secretary Program Implement Wing Gordon Wafimbu. 
When presenting the acquittals, MP Atiafa said the DSIP funds have enabled the district to deliver impact projects to the people of Enganofi. Atiyafa said despite limited fundings and budget cuts, he thanked the Maraperoso government for their continued support towards the DSIP program. He said it is through the DSIP that they are able to see infrastructure developments, among others in the district. I've been through different systems. I was the premier of Eastern Islands for the six years, you know, back then. Uh, and then I've been in, in Parliament now continuously for the next, for the last two, three terms now. And I can see the changes in my district, what's actually happening with this money. If we spend money where it's supposed to go, there's going to be change in the communities, in our rural districts. MP Atiafa also called for implementing agencies to be well funded to effectively carry out monitoring and evaluation of improvement programs. If we have these people been funded and resourced and they are out there monitoring the programs and projects, you will see a lot happening on the ground as well as the uh, reporting system will come on time. Upon receiving the reports, the IRD Deputy Secretary Gordon Wafimbi said Enganofi District is one of the top performing districts in the Highlands region and is always consistent to present its acquittal reports. He commended the district and urged the leaders to collaborate as a team. Gladys Skila, National MTV News. East Sipic Provincial Health Authority CEO Matthew Kalovia has clarified the claims made by a woman that went viral on social media that the hospital lacked evacuation protocols. The video of the woman complaining was posted last week on the morning of the massive 6.9 magnitude earthquake that hit the province. The earthquake struck at around 6.22 a.m. on Sunday, the 24th of March, catching everyone off guard, resulting in an uncoordinated evacuation, which further exacerbated the already tense situation. This prompted the lady, who was a guardian of a patient, to post a video of her expressing her frustration on social media. Mr. Kaluvia said the video was a reflection of the chaos that ensued when an oxygen cylinder fell and leaked slightly during the quake, leading to this sudden evacuation. I want to assure all, all of you that our hospital team acted swiftly and efficiently to secure the gas cylinder and prevent any harm to individual or the damage to our facility. The situation was content promptly, thanks to the, the dedic uh, dedication and the quick thinking of our staff. Kalovia said people must also understand that natural disasters occur spontaneously, hence it is always challenging. It is essential to understand that while we have a robust emergency protocols in place for life-threatening situations like the one we experience, uh, challenging of dealing with a natural disaster that strikes suddenly without warning is immense. He also highlighted that the shortage of staff also made it challenging for the hospital. The shortage of medical staff uh, in comparison to the number of patients further more complicated matters. Uh, with only one nurse available per seat attending to 20 patients per ward and their caregivers in each ward. And of course the resources were stressed Kalovia further said they will be conducting a thorough review of the hospital's emergency response procedures to ensure that they become better equipped to handle such situations in the future and thank the staff, patients and their guardians for their understanding and cooperation. Edson Kuso, National MTV News. The East Sipic Students Association of the University of Technology in Lei Murbe province hosted a disaster drive appeal at Eriku, where donations were collected from the general public and the Sipic communities in Lei. The association's spokesperson, Nathaniel Bakau, stated that 
The donations are basically to help those who are affected by earthquakes and water level rise in the Sipic River area of East Sipic Province. He made an open appeal to everyone who is willing to assist in this drive to drop by and pay them a visit at Top Town. Now we take a look at the Nest Fund market report. The Kina closed lower at 0.2648 US dollars in the interbank market. At Bank South Pacific, your Kina was buying 0.2573 US dollars, 0.3921 Australian dollars, 0.2314 Euro, 38.68 Japanese yen. Looking at commodity prices at New York close, gold is trading higher, coffee closed higher, cocoa closed lower, copra closed higher, palm oil closed unchanged, crude oil is trading higher, copper closed unchanged. And on the stock market, the Dow Jones closed lower, the ASX 200 is trading lower, the All Ordinaries is trading lower. National MTV News continues after the break. Stay with us. Dear son, you ask me how I live such a good life. Yes, I've had some good luck, like the day I met your mother. But it wasn't always that way. I've made some good choices too, like working hard and keeping my super with Nasfan. They looked after it for me, which meant I could concentrate on looking after my family. Living each day, knowing that when the time came, I'd be ready for tomorrow. Love, Dad. The National Statistical Office is conducting a nationwide search to recruit data collectors to take part in the 2024 National Population Census in June. Applicants must have the following. Be between 18 and 45 years old, a minimum of grade 10, be physically fit and healthy, must not have a speech disorder, be good at public speaking and interacting with people, confident to use an Android phone or tablet, and have previous experience in data collection. If you want to be a data collector in the 2024 National Population Census, pick up an application form at the provincial headquarters or download it at www.nso.gov.pg. Fill the application form and submit with your updated CV to the Provincial Census Coordinator or the Provincial Recruitment Coordinator at your provincial headquarters. Applications close 19th April 2024. This message is endorsed by the Office of the National Statistician. Sabi o sa number one super, you can check him super account by your phone na internet. Kisip balance bilang your long SMS hurry up through. Look him transaction history, housing advance eligibility, beneficiary listing na download him statement bilang you want him NSL mobile app or member portal. Sabi si Gerald Ramla ask him, you can ring him or send him email go to call center bilang mipla. You don't need la sana bro line. Join him plan tiol arap lang number one super members who say to use him service online. Visit him number one super website tete. The stage is set for the Isuzu T20 Smash Round 2. It's Black Bus vs. Cassowaris, Saturday at 10 a.m. And Mariners vs. Madman at 2 p.m. Mariners vs. Black Base, Sunday at 10 a.m. And Cassowaris vs. Madman at 2 p.m. And Mariners vs. Cassowaris, Monday at 10 a.m. And Black Base vs. Madman at 2 p.m. The Isuzu T20 Smash. Live only on your number one to watch, MTV. 
You're watching National MTV News. Chairman of the Teachers Service Commission, Samson Wangihomi, has encouraged all teachers across the country to execute their civil duty by taking part in the upcoming national census. Chairman Wangyomi is calling on all teachers in the country to take part in the up-and-coming national census in June. He invoked Section 205 of the Teachers Act, which states that the commission may grant leave of absence to a member of the teaching service to allow him or her to engage in such civil or military service in the interest of Papua New Guinea as is prescribed. I am calling on teachers, if they are approached, that they must take part in, in, in the census. But before they do, they must give their names to our TAC advisors in the provinces or the Provincial Education Division or even the department's inspectors. We, I ask them to help in recruiting. Uh, now they want uh, trainers. Mr. Wangiomi went on to clarify that no penalties will be imposed on teachers. However, he said that teachers taking part in the national census will only be compensated if they work after hours. They will, however, be paid according to the teaching hours weekly. He explained this further. You will, you will be automatically released. There won't be any penalties imposed on you. All right. And I know you teachers will be asking for, will I be paid uh, for doing this exercise? And I want to strongly emphasize that if you are engaged during the normal public service times, from 7.45 to 4.06, you are already being paid by the government. All right? You are already being paid by the government. But if, if the national statistics people want you to work after hours, then that's when you can put in a claim to them. He reiterated the call for teachers to take part in the national census. So we, we call upon all our, all our teachers uh, to, to be actively, actively involved in this um, very, very important uh, uh, activity because we need data uh, for to develop policies, to develop um, um, uh, and to set priorities for development for our country. So please, Tamara Agavi, National MTV News. The Kaving Police Station welcomed the Assistant Commissioner of Police for the New Guinea Islands Region, Inspector Pedro Drano, with a grand parade. Police officers, both male and female, marched in formation, showcasing their discipline and professionalism. The parade was a symbol of the commitment and dedication of the Kaving police to serving the community. Following the parade, Inspector Pero Drano inspected the officers, reviewing their uniforms and overall appearance. He commanded the officers on their smart and well-maintained turnout, which reflected their pride in their profession. The program continued with the NGI Provincial Police Commander's three-day workshop, which aimed to enhance the skills and knowledge of the officers. ACP Drano emphasized the importance of community policing as a key strategy for reducing crime and building trust between the police and the public, and the importance of having a provincial police commander's workshop. The workshop also provided an opportunity for officers to share their experiences and best practices. They discussed challenges faced in their daily operations and developed strategies to improve service. Delivery. The provincial police commander, Superintendent Albert Belli for caving, expressed his gratitude for his visit and support. He said the workshop would greatly benefit the officers and contribute to the overall effectiveness of the caving police station. The assistant commissioner's visit and the three-day workshop were a testament to the commitment of the Papua New Guinea police force to providing quality policing services throughout the New Guinea Islands region. 
The European Union has launched the 2024 NDICI Civil Society Organizations and NDICI Human Rights Program and invites civil society organizations and international organizations to participate in the call for proposals. The overall objective of the call for proposals is to contribute to an inclusive, participatory, empowered and independent civil society and democratic space in partner countries. Rural agriculture in PNG is mostly based on subsistence to small-scale farming and provides economic livelihoods for the majority of the population. Attempts to develop and modernize this sector face enormous challenges with limited access to technology, vital skills and knowledge and not to mention the increasingly stringent international standards that must be met. Women entrepreneurs, who are the most marginalized group, lack leadership and entrepreneurship skills to engage in economic and business activities. Complementing the role of the state, civil society organizations and international organizations play a crucial role in addressing these issues. Under the call for proposals, there are two lots. Lot 1 is on the Agricultural Rural Development Program and Lot 2 on Women's Leadership and Economic Empowerment. Specific objective of Lot 1 is to enhance efficiency and effectiveness of smallholder-dominated agricultural sector to meet the standards set by the international regulation, such as the International Agri-Food Safety Standards or the EU Deforestation Regulation. Specific objective of Law 2 is to increase women's access to skills development, financial services, products and business leadership. The overall amount available under this call for proposals is approximately 17.56 million kina. Estagane, National MTV News. A mother has voiced her concern on the increase of petty crimes in the nation's capital. Mrs. Lucy Senge stated that many of these crimes are due to lack of employment opportunities in the city and appeals that the responsible MPs for these districts and the government look into creating more employment opportunities. Mrs. Lucy Senge stated that when more employment opportunities are available, many young people will not resort to illegal activities to survive daily. Everybody will work and they're going to be on the pot night. And then they will have their bread and butter on the table. Rather than boys hanging around on the streets, huh? you see. This is one of the things that we need to really come down and see. Employ the youths, put them on the salary rather than giving contract to one person. She further stated that many people in the city live in homes that have more than 10 people to a house and do their best to survive. These ones selling here, they accommodate 15 to 16 people in the house, survival of the feeders. So we need to employ more workers, fill up the gap. Senge continued by stating this. NCDC is so many times talking, talking, no selling beetle nuts, no illegal markets. But people are thinking of their bread and butter. Who will feed them? Because there were a lot of unemployment here. So when they feel hungry, they are thinking of their tummy. They will come and pull the bags, give me the money. So city is money, you see. Mrs. Senge made an appeal to the members of parliament responsible for the districts in the city and the government to look into addressing these. Francisca Anania, National MTV News. And now moving to overseas news, an Israel airstrike has claimed the lives of several aid workers of different nationalities that were living and working in Gaza. This airstrike by the Israeli military has had wide-ranging reverberations both in the region and globally. It's led to the deaths of seven aid workers, including an Australian as well as a citizen of, the, of Canada and the United States, as well as a British citizen and a Polish citizen and a Palestinian. We did hear earlier from the Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, who has admitted that the Israeli military was responsible for this attack on the aid convoy, uh, but also suggested that this was just something that occurred during wartime. 
Unfortunately, in the last day, there was a tragic case of our forces unintentionally hitting innocent people in the Gaza Strip. This happens in wartime. But Benjamin Netanyahu's words are unlikely uh, to be well received by both the families of those who have lost their lives and also the governments of their countries. We have heard a growing chorus of global condemnation of Israel's action, including from the United States. Earlier in the day, the Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, was in France meeting with his counterpart there and the president of France. Uh, he said that America had requested a swift and thorough investigation into the, the circumstances involved in this attack on the aid convoy. Later in the day, we heard from the White House National Security Spokesman John Kirby, who said that President Joe Biden was heartbroken and that America was outraged. I, I think by, out, by saying we're outraged, I think you can fairly characterize that as condemning the strike itself? Of course. I mean, nobody wants to see this kind of violence happen to humanitarian aid workers who, as was noted earlier, were doing all the right things. The question now is, what are the practical implications for Israel? America is the biggest supplier of military equipment to Israel. Ukraine's success in hitting Russian ships in the Black Sea has caused Russian President Vladimir Putin to sack his Navy chief and plot a new plan. <gasps> While on land, Ukraine's been struggling to gain ground on sea it's dominating. This is the moment Ukrainian sea drones strike and sink a Russian warship on patrol in the Black Sea. It's become a familiar scene. Since the war started, Kyiv says it's downed more than 80 Russian ships in the strategic waters. That shows to Putin that uh, he's not safe in the Black Sea at the moment and he's looking for uh, alternative theatres, let's put it that way. Vladimir Putin's eyes are on Ochamchia port in Abkhazia, a territory of Georgia which Russia invaded and has occupied since 2008. Satellite images show since Moscow's full-scale invasion of Ukraine, structures have been built and dredging of the port has taken place. Russia's plan to transform the Ochimchia port into its navy base is aimed at shifting the confrontation into the Black Sea, into our territorial waters, and at creating a threat to the strategic perspective of the Black Sea. Russia's plan doesn't just pose a security threat to Georgia, it could also create a diplomatic headache. Moscow is hedging that Ukraine won't strike at ships while docked near Georgian territory. But if it does, experts say it could drag Tbilisi into the war, throwing up a complex political problem for the region. It's a, it's a very challenging um, threat, I would say, because there is not much uh, one can do. Natia Siskoria has studied Russia and Ukraine for more than a decade. I believe that the main goal behind building this, uh, turning this port into a naval base is, to, uh, is uh, for Russia to use it against Ukraine. Any sort of response from Ukraine will be used by Russia uh, in terms of information war purposes and uh, will be framed in a, in a way that Ukraine is now striking you know, um, assets in the Black Sea and in this case um, um, is willing to expand the war. Russia is losing its influence over Georgia. It wants to join NATO and gained European Union candidacy status in December. Retired Georgian General Vakhtain Kapanansi believes that Putin's plan is more political than long-term military strategy. It will be some kind of um, uh, message to Georgia. It will be some kind of disrupting moment for NATO ships visiting to Georgia and also merchant ships. Uh, no businessman will be happy just having uh, after 30 kilometer Russian new military base. As the war in Ukraine enters its third year, Russia's fight for victory is becoming more desperate. National MTV News continues after the break with Trukai Sport. Stay with us. Sit the chair.
challenge. Choose PNG's favorite purified bottled water. True True Wara, 100% PNG made. Proudly bottled by Paradise Foods. Hamamas One Time Telecom's Goodplum Mobile Data Plans. With eight exclusive mobile data plans to choose from, select a plan that best suits your budget. You can purchase a plan for as low as 3 kina for 1 gigabyte of data valid for 24 hours. Or receive 130 gigabyte of data valid for 30 days for only 150 kina. Telecom, connecting you anywhere, anytime. Terms and conditions apply. Power energy drink. Feel the power. Because of you, we sourced all the high quality coffee beans from around the globe and roast them to perfection, giving you this amazing coffee flavor and aroma with rich taste and value at an unbeatable price. Bone Aroma comes in three different sizes, 30, 50, and 75 grams, and it's available in most outlets nationwide. Bone Aroma Blend 84 Instant Coffee, good for taste. Not price. Say hello to the new basic corn beef. A freshly tasty add to your cooking menu. Just look at it. Yummy. It's affordable and now available in shops near you. Try our new basic corn beef now. It's better, it's best. Buy more, win more one time roots rice. We have money belum three hundred thousand kira. No can miss out. Buy 10 kg roots with them grain rice. Cut them round in big the roots logo on top long front long back rice. Now write the name Nana Mas long long back side long app. Drop them inside long entry box long store. Week one draw, one one winner by exceed five hundred kina. Week two draw, one thousand kina. Week three draw, two thousand kina. Now long week four draw, five thousand kina. Second Roots Rice Facebook page long kissing more talk seven. Terms and conditions is start. Welcome to the Eat Smart campaign with Chef Jules Henao, where we meet the true heroes the sons and the daughters of our soil, our farmers, the very people that help bring food to our tables. How good does this get? Unlocking the potential of agriculture, Chef Jules Henao will cook healthy, nutritious meals with the produce grown by our champions. This is the Eat Smart Campaign. 8.30 p.m. Sunday, right here on the number one to watch, MTV. Two Kai Sports. Welcome to True Kai Sports. PNGSP hunters are optimistic and looking forward for their next game in the Host Plus Cup. SP Hunters head coach Paul Leighton said that his side is expecting a tough match. Back, we're back into, uh, we gave the first part of the week off, gave them three days off, then we just started pick up training again, and uh, this is just a normal week for us, leading into like we were prior, rounds one to three. So it's the same same build up, uh, we've got um, a couple of boys back in, in the squad, obviously Valentine and Robert Matisse can't travel, which opens up space for other boys, so, uh, so we've had to manage them because they have a short turnaround since they played Sunday. So they've got a six-day turnaround, so we're just managing them. But as you can see, they have the bibs on out there. But, but uh, they, I think they're pretty happy to play. They're sitting at the bottom, but, um, but as a, again, they're, they're a quality side. Uh, they got affiliated with uh, an NRL club, so we're expecting a good quality team. Um, where they're sitting now definitely doesn't res reflect to the, uh, the team that they are. It's early in the season, so we're expecting a tough, tough hit out. I then said the side will correct mistakes and looking forward for the next game. We worked on our penalty count from round one, uh, round one and two, and we reduced that by less than half. Uh, now we work on our on our errors. 
now we're working on our errors so which is a big thing for all, all the clubs but um I, I know it'll help us a lot so we've been focusing a lot on that uh, this well actually since pre-season but yeah m more so this week <laughs> jonathan sibona trukai sports PNG Sports Foundation and Department of Education has signed a memorandum of understanding aimed at supporting physical education in schools throughout Papua New Guinea. With the signing today, DMOU also ensures the promotion of Go Rural, Go Global Sports Development Program by introducing sports necessary development skills in primary schools to complement the teaching of physical education. PNG Sports Foundation CEO Albert Veratau emphasized on the program. Sport plays a role. I know education plays a role in educating our children and ensuring that the, they build good characters, uh, have uh, excellent uh, performance, uh, academic performance, and all that, uh, that is ar around the academic uh, qualifications, uh, academic performance and academic achievements, but uh, sport is also, in my opinion, and I think more, more so all over the world, sport is building character also. Sport is strengthening, strengthening the young people to be disciplined, to be, uh, to, to be, you know, uh, have self-control, self-respect, uh, be a positive-minded uh, person, because sport is all about fun too. So. In promoting excellence through sports in schools under the national education system, Secretary of the Department of Education, Dr. Uke Kombra, said sports has many benefits such as healthy living, having higher esteem and improved developments. The MOU will pave way for the Ministry of Education and PNG Sports Foundation to create pathway for school excellence. Jonathan Sibona, Trukai Sports. Trukai Sports continues after the break. Stay with us. Trukai Sports. Mamas want them telecoms Gutlo mobile data plans. With eight exclusive mobile data plans to choose from, select a plan that best suits your budget. You can purchase a plan for as low as 3 kina for 1 gigabyte of data valid for 24 hours. Or receive 130 gigabyte of data valid for 30 days for only 150 kina. Telecom, connecting you anywhere, anytime. Terms and conditions apply. Dear son, you ask me how I live such a good life. Yes, I've had some good luck, like the day I met your mother. But it wasn't always that way. I've made some good choices too, like working hard and keeping my super with Nasfan. They looked after it for me, which meant I could concentrate on looking after my family. Living each day, knowing that when the time came, I'd be ready for tomorrow. Love, Dad. National Population Census Ibai Kama June 2024 and National Statistic Office Iwo Kong Paini Mongkut Pulaman Meri Pusat Ibai Make You Walk Long Kissim Data Inside Long 11 Board na LNT Belong All You in up long apply suppose Christmas Belong You is up Namel Long 18 na 45 years You must finish in grade 10 school or untap You must fit na healthy na no got heavy long eye na You must again talk to good na clear long eye belong all man Meri You must get experience long kissim data or survey before You must get one pillar bank account na You must get survey long using all kind machine all same android phone or tablet too suppose you think all same you in up long making work long census 2024 you can go kiss him application form no provincial nso office close to you or you can download him long www.nso.gov.pg pull him up in this perform na sunny wanted cv belong you equal long provincial census coordinator or provincial recruitment coordinator long nso office is up close to you closing date e by long number 19 day belong moon april 2024 this bulletok survey e kiss him to go right e come long office belong national statistician it's almost time to crunch your months on Kai Time. If you're a warrior in your kitchen and want to be featured in the show, send us your video 
The sky's the limit. It could be a family recipe, it could be a secret recipe, it could even be a simple recipe, just adding a few touches to make it special. Send us a video of your best recipe creation today and we'll feature it on Kai Time. Buy more, win more, one time roots rise. We have half money mark below 300,000 kira. No can miss out. Buy 10 kg roots with them green rice. Cut them round in big the roots logo on top long front long back rice. Now write the name, nan namas long you long backside long air. Drop them inside long empty box long store. Week one draw, one one winner bikes in 500 kina. Week two draw, 1000 kina. Week three draw, 2000 kina. Now long week four draw, 5000 kina. Second roots rice Facebook page long kissing more talk save. Tabs the conditions is tough. You're watching Trukai Sports. Moving to overseas sports now in cricket, Australia has finished the women's cricket T20 series against Bangladesh with the game still in hand and the finals to be played on Thursday. The batting, uh, batting first in game two, uh, the Aussies made eight for 161 from their 20 overs, thanks largely to Georgia Wareham's 57 from just 30 balls. Ash Gardner and Sophie Molyneux then took three wickets each to help restrict the hosts to just nine for 103. The third and final game of the series is on Thursday. The Australian women's soccer team, the Mathildas, have arrived in Florida ahead of next week's international soccer-friendly match against Mexico. It's the first camp for the team since they qualified for this year's Olympics. Australia will play the 31st ranked Mexico on the 10th of April in San Antonio, Texas. Matilda's defender Alana Kennedy says it's important the team continues to improve ahead of their journey to Paris. Yeah, it's definitely not easy qualifying through Asia um, and we always want to be at these major tournaments to test ourselves against the best. Um, so yeah, it's a great achievement from the team to be going to our, or to have qualified for our third Olympics in a row. That and Strukai Sports, the Money Plus Weather Report is next. Stay with us. Strukai Sports. True Kai Sports. Buy more, win more, one time roots rise. We have half money mark below 300,000 kira. No can miss out. Buy 10 kg roots with them green rice. Cut them round in big the roots logo on top long front long back rice. Now write the name, nan namas long you long backside long air. Drop them inside long empty box long store. Week one draw, one one winner bikes in 500 kina. Week two draw, 1000 kina. Week three draw, 2000 kina. Now long week four draw, 5000 kina. Second Roots Rice Facebook page, don't kiss him, more talk savvy. Tabs the conditions is tough. Top up now with Telecom's Good Pa More Bundles. Subscribe to any of Telecom's More Bundle plans, ranging from 3 kina to 75 kina to enjoy unlimited on net calls. More SMS, more data with increased off net minutes. Choose from 8 exclusive plans, packed with more value to experience seamless communication with your family and friends. Telecom, connecting you anywhere, anytime. Terms and conditions apply. Because of you, we sourced all the high quality coffee beans from around the globe and roast them to perfection, giving you this amazing coffee flavor and aroma with rich taste and value at an unbeatable price. Bone Aroma comes in three different sizes, 30, 50 and 75 grams and it's available in most outlets nationwide. Bone Aroma Blend 84 Instant Coffee. Good for taste, not price. Power energy drink. Feel the power. The stage is set for the Isuzu T20 Smash Round 2. It's Black Bus vs. Cassowaris Saturday at 10 a.m. and Mariners vs. Madman at 2 p.m. Mariners vs. Black Base Sunday at 10 a.m. and Cassowaris vs. Madman.
at 2 p.m. and Mariners versus Kasawaris Monday at 10 a.m. and Black Base versus Mudman at 2 p.m. The Isuzu T20 Smash live only on your number one to watch MTV. This weather update is proudly brought to you by MoniPlus, with you always. The weather forecast for the next 24 hours in the southern region. Port Mosby City, partly cloudy with few showers and possible thunderstorms. Daru, some showers with possible thunderstorms. Kerema, some showers with possible thunderstorms. Alatal few showers with possible thunderstorms, Papondeta possible rain showers. In the Mumase region, Lay City, partly cloudy with some showers possible, Medang partly cloudy with possible few showers, Wewek partly cloudy with few showers possible, Vanimo partly cloudy with possible few showers. In the New Guinea Islands region, Lorengau some showers, Kaveg, some showers and possible thunderstorm. Kokopo and Rabaul, partly cloudy with few showers possible. Kimbe, partly cloudy with possible few showers. Buka, some showers. In the Highlands region, Mount Hagen City, partly cloudy with some showers and possible thunderstorm. Goroka Bans and Kundiawa, rain showers and possible thunderstorm. Mendi, Tari and Wabeg, rain showers and possible thunderstorm. The weather update was proudly brought to you by MoniPlus, with you always. And that wraps up the new sports and weather for Wednesday, the 3rd of April 2024. From all of us here, pleasant viewing, bye for now. This news program was proudly brought to you by Smart Start Breakfast Biscuits and Gold Nuggets. It's Smile O'Clock. It's Smile O'Clock. Gotta brush our teeth. Time O'Clock. It's Smile O'Clock. Smile O'Clock. Time O'Clock. So brush, brush, brush. Everybody is up, up, up. Everybody is up. Brush, brush, brush. Coming up next. 7 p.m. Kai Time. 7.30 p.m. Sports Max. 8 p.m. Tokpasi News Headlines. Followed by Grand Designs Australia. 9 p.m. Super Rugby Women. 11 p.m. Four Corners. And 12 a.m. National MTV News Replay. Oh, Coca-Cola.